Hello, friends. You want to see something beautiful? Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like the starry summer night or a slow common wind. I want to show you 25 or so. It's beautiful Everybody album covers. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Here are 25 album covers or so that um, I just have personal favorites. These aren't necessarily my ultimate favorites. I always make that excuse. Why make excuses? I'm showing these 25. There are another 50 or 100 I could have shown, and um, I'm sure you're going to suggest others uh, that you like too. Uh, first is an artist, Uno Morales. Uno Morales is not the musician, but actually the artist uh, who did this album cover two years ago for um, Gruff Reese, who is the lead singer of the Super Furry Animals, a Welsh band, a very favorite band of mine. Well, <laughs> I got this special edition. Look at this thing. It's it's basically a gatefold, not folded. And it's almost 3D metallic. You can see the rainbow effect. Now look at this. Uh, this was a political statement. I'm not gonna get into the music now because I'm gonna share this again in an offshoot uh, for the, a record store day video I do soon. But look at this. It's Jesus having, having um, coffee with Donald Trump. I can get in the whole politics, but look at this beautiful masterpiece. There's actually a, a cover slick of the cover in here as well. And the record, it's like, it's totally like a strange thing to keep. Uh, Records Today, they put out this condensed version. Uh, this is different music. This is actually demo things from this stripped down, which I'll talk about in a uh, additional video. But I love what they did with this and took a segment out and made this cover. Uh, so anyway, beautiful, beautiful artwork. And uh, I'm a big fan of the music as well. Um, Basquat was a painter who died at a young age uh, in the New York uh, East Village art scene, just the, the New York art scene, uh, was championed by Andy Warhol. And one of his paintings is used on the new album by The Strokes. Look at this beautiful painting on a cover. It's got a, a slip case, a plastic sleeve, but um, I have showed this before on a new release video, but um, uh, Jean-Luc Basquat, a uh, great, great modern artist. And again, one of those artists that tragically died way too young. Great part of the New York art scene. There is a beautiful, if it's, I think it's a Tashin uh, book of um, an overview of his work. That's just a gorgeous book. I don't have it, but I'll, be, I'll, I'll gladly accept it by um, someone to send that Tashin Bus Squad book to me uh, via VCLT because I know people getting wonky about people receiving VCLT packages around here, but I just love this. Um, good route record too, but I'm not really talking about the music uh, here. Um, Another, I did a feature, or not really a feature, a little introduction on um, Room Gramophone Records. Um, great artist. I don't have the book handy, but there's a book of uh, uh, 20 years of Room Gramophone, their artists and their cover art. Uh, that is just just a gorgeous, gorgeous record. Um, Kim Harathe, Kim Harathe, I can't even pronounce it, does almost all their covers. But look at the graphics on this. This is a box set by um, Arv Henriksen, and Arv Henriksen is a trumpet player, jazz, avant-garde, minimalist. Um, he's, uh, I got to know him first or heard of him first because of um, my interest in um, Japan. The album, the, the group Japan, well actually the offshoot of, um, of um, damn, I forgot his name. See what happens when you don't take notes. I just read it, say the stuff off the top of my head. Um, David Sylvian, of course. David Sylvian, uh, there's a feature I did on David Sylvian, so seek this out. But these amazing, this is a four record box set. And look at this beautiful artwork and design. 
just very graphic. Uh, this four is overview, uh, four separate albums, and it comes with uh, two CDs covering the work. So I highly suggest this. If you like minimalist, moody jazz, ethereal trumpet playing, um, not so unaccessible. It's more moody, good mu music for massage, but again, uh, beautiful artwork. Beautiful in its own way, in a, in a very wonderful way. Uh, exotic Birds and Fruit, uh, a Procol Harum record. I'd say this is their mid-period Procol Harum. Uh, this came out in 1974, and um, I didn't, I bought this album when it came out originally, and I didn't love it. This and um, Grand Hotel, until recently, until the last decade, I kind of rediscovered these, and I love uh, Gary Brooker's voice and Matthew Fisher on the keyboards. This is a series from the reissues that came out um, about four or five years ago in the UK only, but uh, what a gorgeous painting. Um, I think might be from the National Portrait Gallery in London. And of course, I should have um, credited the cover art here. Anyway, Procol Harum. Great cover of, uh, you know, produced classic by the Talking Heads. I have a puzzle of this and I'm missing this piece here. So it's a promo puzzle that Warner Sire put out when the record came out that I got from the label. And um, I think this is just a, a really gorgeous um, mapping, almost of, of Polaroid types. Um, the cover concept is by David Byrne. It's a photomatic of the talking heads. And it's made, it made a four, 529 close-up Polaroids, reproductions by uh, Jimmy DeSala. But, uh, you know, you could pick several talking heads albums uh, for this kind of video because they're all really, really, Fair Music is beautiful, sort of the manhole covers, but I think all their covers are interesting. When you have uh, artists that have artists, heavy musicians that come from their art school background and have a really a strong sense of design and art, you, this is what you come up with. And I just, I love this stuff. And then another reason why uh, the vinyl format uh, is preferable to a certain group of people, especially into the art world. Uh, I don't know if this is the only, this might be the only uh, hypnosis representative, Storm Thurgison. People know him because of 10CC, because of Pink Floyd, because of McCartney and Wings, because of UFO, because of so many bands. But this might be ultimately my favorite. I mean, I, I, I could have put, I could have chosen an album that may be my favorite album cover. And I've said this many times, I didn't put Adam Hart Mother, the cow on the Pink Floyd album cover without their name to me as a stunning cover and I showed that in a, in a similar video I did of this um, on this topic. I'll probably keep coming back and revisiting this occasionally but I think this is really great. But Adam Hart Mother also with that just lonely cow uh, standing in the field uh, is really gorgeous. The major label debut of They Might Be Giants Flood. It's almost like this uh, Dorothea Lang photograph. It's not that but uh, wonderful uh, sort of retro period photograph. It's just really nice. Nice package. Nice artwork. Love this album. And a wonderful album, Flood. You know, Birdhouse in Your Soul is the key cut here. Jim White. I have all his records on CD. I wish they'd come out on vinyl. Uh, these were on Luca Bop, which is the um, David Byrne label. Amazing record. He's sort of this psychedelic country artist, Jim White. And this is called Wrong-Eyed Jesus, the mysterious tale of how I shouted Wrong-Eyed Jesus. I love the artwork here. There is a, a documentary on him in sort of around this time period, which is really good. You can uh, either stream it possibly or find it on DVD. I have a DVD upstairs of it. Love this record. He writes a lot about Jesus in a kind of cowboy way. Cowboy psych, cow punk, not even punk. It's more folk than that. Uh, but Jim White has made some great, great records. And um, I just love the cover art on this uh, record. Let's see who did this. Uh, da, 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 da. Artistic coordination by Sylvia Reed, designed by Helen Silverman, Hello Studio. But just really a gorgeous illustration. Again, I love really good illustration. 
stark graphic photography and um, just uh, I like psychedelic. You'll see a bunch of psychedelic related things in here as well because I, I gravitate toward that whole psychedelic scene as well. Uh, this Gillian Welch album, obviously the reissues are amazing audiophile records, but look at this beautiful uh, painting illustration. Art and design by John Dyer Busley. Uh, photograph by Mark Seliger, who a, does a lot of stuff for Rolling Stone magazine. He was their main photographer for years. Not sure if he still is, but um, Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. Beautiful cover, beautiful record, beautiful design. Let's talk about Sir Paul McCartney. Um, McCartney worked a lot with hypnosis over the years, but I'm going to go with his last album, which is his own painting, and I think it works really well. This is Egypt Station. I love this package. I love this cover. And of course, because of the way thing they do, especially a song like Paul McCartney, remastered, repackaged within the same friggin' year. Um, this is another version of the same record with extra something and extra something. It's a different color variant of the cover art that came out later. Um, this is the Explorer edition, where this is just the regular edition. A extra, a couple extra cuts. I don't even remember anymore. I'm a Beatle guy, but I don't even remember. However, I love the cover packaging of both these. So sometimes it's for the artwork. You know, you can write in the comments, the cash grabs, rebind this shit. I hate this shit. I love the artwork. I love Egypt Station. Really great record and um, went to number one. Okay, the psychedelic thing happens here with um, this album. This is a Sunday's reissue, but Chocolate Watch Band. Is this their second album? You psych guys will remember, um, and women better than me, the Inner Mystique. Love this uh, montage. Just gorgeous. That's why I love that, you know, the poster collection I have from the Fillmore and the Avalon, the handbills, there's a video around here. If you're into artwork, you know, you're at the right channel because I do these every once in a while. I love showcasing artwork, gatefolds, photography, illustration, design. I want to do more of it. I want to do some collaborations on it too, but um, very favorite album of mine. Should I stick with Psychedelic a little bit? You know, I could have picked a lot of Grateful Dead records, but... Um, this is a record they did at the Family Dog. The Family Dog was a club that didn't last a long time on the Great Highway in San Francisco, right below the Cliff House on the edge of Golden Gate Park. I was at the show. It wasn't billed as a Grateful Dead show, but as separate solo of Mickey Hart and his heartbeats, Bobby Ace, which is Bob Weir, um, and his cards from the bottom of the deck. Family Dog on the Great Highway, April 1970. More acoustic set. Great thing, I love this cover, like love, almost like the 3D effect they do. Of course, um, great photography and design. This is hard to find right now. This was a record store day several years ago uh, edition, but I love this. I could have done any of the poster artists um, of this period. Um, so is this Kelly Mouse? I'm trying to think. Um, Art direction design, Steve Vance. Color illustration, Scott McDougall. So it's a takeoff on the 60. Oh, the original recording well, produced. Okay, the recording was produced by Alzel Stanley, but that's, uh, he's the, the acid man I did a, who just recently died. I did a, a video on him. He didn't have any, anything to do with the cover, but uh, very reminiscent of, of the um, 60s uh, psychedelic posters of San Francisco. Showing more psychedelic type uh, effects. I could have picked several Flaming Lips albums. Look at this, very uh, metallic day glow effect. Um, this one is called um, Terra Mingles, is that what it's called? The Flaming Groovies, uh, easy, measy, easy. I, you know, the problem with psychedelic typeface, sometimes you can't friggin' read it. So let's go to the label so I get this right, so I don't have cards and letters coming in, people bitching about things. I can't read that there, too. Uh, easy. You know, fuck it. You don't really give a shit. Right? Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful uh, psychedelic colors. Um, this 
sometimes certain colors you can't read. Look at that. If you can read that, send me a postcard. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, no, no, no. This should be a, this should be illegal. This should be like, this should be translation. I need like Google Translator. Is there a Google Translator that goes from psychedelic to English or any other language for that matter? Um, another great psychedelic uh, of the post-psychedelic era emulating psychedelic is the Dukes of Stratosphere, a.k.a. Uh, I was going to say X-Files, a.k.a. Ecstasy, XTC, uh, doing uh, one of two uh, collections they did of their faux psychedelic uh, late 60s uh, retro style band records. Beautiful records, beautiful package. I have an original UK edition. Uh, the reissue that came out last year is a gorgeous gatefold. So, um, Look at this. What a beautiful cover. Look at that. Oh my God. One of theirs is an EP, one is a, a full LP. So, okay. Talk about graphic and photography. Another artist whose every record cover is amazing design, and you know she really gets into it and the art direction design and the creation of her persona each time. And I'm a big fan of her music is Bjork. Uh, started getting into her because of the Sugar Cubes. Uh, have oh, Sugar Cubes I only have on compact disc, but her covers are just amazing. Uh, God, what a great cover. This is um, homogenic, beautiful, gorgeous artwork. See, there, at least you can read this, right? Unlike that psychedelic uh, other album, but um, gorgeous record. Beautiful record, too. Great music. I love Bjork. Her music is always interesting. It's always creative. It keeps you on your toes. Um, just really, really beautiful. Um, another record I really like, illustration-wise. Some people don't like this record, this um, cover. And I think this is an amazing cover. Uh, is this her second album or their first? Second album, I think. Prettiest for You, uh, Alice Cooper. Look at that. First of all, the beautiful pink, beautiful pop of that painting. Um, you know, the picture's fun. This is the Rhino reissue of several years ago. Let me see, does it say who did the cover? It's a beautiful uh, red vinyl record. This is a great record, you know? I kind of like their first few albums before Alice Cooper got so theatrical. Yeah, that's their shtick and everything, but but Pretty's For You. Um, cover painting by Ed Beardsley. Ed Beardsley did that cover painting. Gorgeous painting. I think this with the pink really works. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful. Another sort of photo, I mean, another illustration which is pretty out there, but um, is uh, this, the Fiona Apple album. And this is the Eiler Wheel. Uh, love the laminate, how it's sort of embossed, print-like. But I think this is a really uh, modern, wonderful illustrated cover. Um, this is the Vinyl Me Please issue of it. Uh, the artwork is... Kembro, you know, if you're gonna do credits, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say something here. Not controversial. Neil Young, <laughs> especially the early Neil Young records where he had like lyrics and all that handwriting. Whoever did the calligraphy, I don't think it was him. You can't fucking read that shit. So if you're gonna do things, I know it's really cool to have beautiful calligraphy and illustration. Okay, here the mastering part you can read. But all the other details, you, it's, you can't hardly read. But this is a great record anyway. I'm a huge um, Fiona Apple fan. Her new record is amongst one of my top three records of this year. And all her packages are always really interesting. Again, this is a, a gorgeous cover. Not everyone's taste style-wise uh, for an illustrator. Uh, but I think it's gorgeous. And I love that her stuff's finally being sort of issued on vinyl. Even though it's usually it's vinyl me please and that limited. I think it should be out there for everybody, but um, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Okay. 
just start photography. Let's do a series of maybe three that are just basic photography. Maybe you would say nothing special, but the graphics of this, I mean, bookends, my favorite Simon Garfunkel record, 1968, uh, wonderful portrait by one of the most famous fashion of portrait photographers from the 50s and 60s, and that was Richard Avedon. Richard Avedon, um, I got into, again, because of the Beatles, because of those wonderful Look magazine posters and the shot that's used in the centerfold of Love, the reissue, not Love, the um, uh, Beatles Love Songs. I think they used it in Love too, maybe, um, some of the reissues and the, and the psychedelic posters of the four Beatles. I have a set that I bought when I was a kid, but Richard Avedon took this. This, al this album cover has been uh, emulated by so many other artists and replicated and parodied. But what a great graphic, uh, graphic and photography. Black and white photography is amongst my favorite. Love this record. I think it's a, a really, it is a beautiful record. So Simon Garfunkel's bookends. Um, another great, you know, sticking with the black and white photography thing. I think one of her, my favorite of her album covers is this Kate Bush album. First of all, she's beautiful on this cover. Her eyes just pop. The, the black and white photography of the sensual world. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous photograph. Self-produced album. Let's see who took the cover picture. Cover picture um, is, oh, John Carter Bush. So her, her brother took the picture. Hey, talented. It's a family affair with Kate Bush. I mean, obviously she brings a, a great bass player like Eberhard Weber, Weber plays, Weber, Weber, Plays on her records, gorgeously produced, stunningly beautiful records. Um, beautiful woman, beautiful artwork. Uh, amongst my favorite female vocalists is Kate Bush. Gorgeous cover, beautiful cover. Another great uh, cover is this beautiful black and white picture. This is Dead Can't Dance. This is um, Anastasis. And this record just came out, um, I think this was a reissue of it, as I recall. Um, when did this come out? <laughs> Photography by Zolt Zygmunt. Don't know that person, but it's gorgeous. Gorgeous photography. I just love when an artist has a full bleed photograph with no type. You know, um, Rubber Soul is considered the first pop album to have to be put out by an artist without their name on the cover. They didn't say Rubber, I mean, it said Rubber Soul, but it never said the Beatles um, when it came out. There was a, obviously a hype sticker, but how could you not know those four on that? Gorgeous cover, Dead Can't Dance, great ethereal music, uh, Middle Eastern vibes. Uh, all their records are amazing and their comps and uh, Love, Dead Can't Dance, great stuff. Another great portrait, simple photograph, uh, but just so graphic is uh, Lemonade, this album. You know who that is, don't you? If you don't, you should, it's Beyonce. This is a perfect record. Look at that photography. Just very graphic, very simple. Again, doesn't even have her name on it, but uh, this was probably one of the best records of the year. This came out, was it 2016 or 17, I believe? Um, who took this cover? Also, look at this. Look at this great booklet. Just really graphic. You know, another one I'll throw out, I didn't bring in, a new album by Moses Sumney. Um, Gorgeous photography, very similar to this, which has a wonderful photographic book in it. One of the most beautiful records of this year, which I'll probably have on my top record. But great packaging, great photography. And the photography, I should mention this because it's really important to credit artists. I didn't look this up ahead of time. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry. Probably some famous celebrity photographer or beauty photographer or fashion photographer. And it's probably someone we'll know right when we say his or her name. But um, I don't know. 
gorgeous woman, gorgeous artist, and, and a beautiful record, Lemonade. I think a record that everyone should have um, in their collection if you're into sort of moody soul, little hip hop, uh, just gorgeous soul music, just gorgeous music. A record I continually show here when I talk about artwork, and that is this. Martinis in Bikinis by Sam Phillips. Sam Phillips was married to T-Bone Burnett. I don't know why I even say that, because he produced a lot of these records, and a gorgeous record. Cover photography is by a photographer out of Texas named Jeff Kern, who is, has a very conceptual portrait fashion look. Uh, because of this picture, I've said this story before, um, she was chosen to be in the movie Die Hard 3 because a director got this album and saw that picture. She was Jeremy Irons' sort of sidekick that hardly said a word in the movie, but just thought she looked like this very um, uh, Germanic uh, Eastern spy. So beautiful record. Uh, very pop, Beatlesque, wonderful songs, wonderful productions by um, T-Bone Burnett. But Martinis and Bikinis, what a great cover concept that is. I could have picked five records by Roxy Music, but I think starting at the beginning is probably uh, the best thing to do. You know, they're, they're women on the cover. They're just gorgeous records. They're very graphic, and um, they sort of emulate the times. That early 70s, the glamour, uh, the androgynous uh, look of things and bands. Uh, but just really, really a great record. I mean, great record, great cover. This is a 70s, one of my originals. Two more. I'm gonna pick my favorite guitarist, but uh, the one he did, Ry Cooter, Emmanuel Galban on Nonsuch Records. Uh, Cuban surf guitar. That's a whole different thing than just Cuban music or surf music. Look at this metallic photograph on the cover. On Nonsuch Records, this is Mambo Senueto. This is a, a record that is still in print. You can get it at the Nonsuch site or online. Um, Doyle Partners did the design, the photography. I don't know. That's bad. The Cadillac is photographed by Cindy Lewis. Cindy Lewis did that. All the other photographs are by um, Susan Title Titleman. Susan Titleman happens to be married to um, Ry Cooter and father of, of mother of Joaquin Cooter. So she's a photographer early on, did some of his early covers too. Uh, this is a amazing record. And this is such a stunning record cover. I love this photograph. And lastly, you know, I can't do a beautiful record cover without probably, I mean, showing what probably is considered the most famous record cover. Maybe it's been overdone, overseen, overcopied, uh, but Sgt. Pepper, when this came out in 1967, June, there was nothing like this, you know? You can't even imagine what it was like being 12 and a half, just almost 13, a month or two months before my 13th birthday, buying this record, grabbing in the store. I grabbed the stereo copy as, as they were opening a box in the music store. I literally went there that day. They opened the box, they had a mono box. I think it just opened a box and I just grabbed the stereo. I don't remember all the details. This is a, a, a pressing I got probably 1971 or two. This is a UK uh, stereo version. I also have mono versions from the UK around this time too. Um, what a great record. What a great album cover. Photograph by Michael Cooper, who also did Satanic Majesty's Request by the Rolling Stones. Designed 
by Peter Blake. I did a little feature on Peter Blake uh, earlier this year as well. So 25 beautiful album covers. There's so many more, but um, I love having this collection. I love having this artwork. So show me, tell me your beautiful uh, record covers or just do a thread. You don't have to do 25, do 10. Pick 10. Pick one. <laughs> Everyone do one. Do the one minute. One minute. I, here's the challenge, a thread. One cover, one minute, beautiful cover challenge. We'll see if this happens. Maybe not. Maybe you're all sleeping. Mazzy loves you. Take care.